Despite the provocant title, this is purely personal preference of course. But I still want to make a few points as to why I believe Rush is the best game mode in the Battlefield franchise and why it desperately needs to make a comeback in Battlefield 6. I want to look at it from a few different angles, so I split it up into different categories. First, we're gonna take a look at the amount of action in each game mode. Then, we're gonna look at the tactics you can apply in these game modes and the impact you can have as a squad. Then, we're gonna be looking at the elephant in the room, infantry versus vehicles. And to top it all off, we're gonna take a look at how conquest can be improved in the future. I want to remind you that everything I say in this video is purely my personal opinion on the matter. First, let's take a look at the amount of action, one of many reasons why I prefer Rush over Conquest. We're going to be looking at some Conquest gameplay for this example. What you've seen in the background so far was the start of a round of Conquest on Paracel Storm in Battlefield 4. At this point, we're two minutes into the game and there was very little to no action. Pretty standard for the start of a conquest round. Let's take a look at another example. In this clip, we've just successfully defended the B flag from an enemy attack. You can see me getting the last two kills right here. I was looking at the bottom right to see where I should head next and I saw that the C flag was under attack. So I started to walk over there. And as you can see, it's taken me nearly a full minute to reach that flag. That's a full minute of just walking around with any kind of action at all. Keep in mind, this doesn't happen on all maps and the example you just saw is one of the worst case scenarios. I'll talk about how this can be improved in the last part of the video. Let's compare this to Rush. Rush is an all out action packed game mode. There is very little to no downtime when it comes to picking and fighting your battles. Whether you're attacking or defending, all the action is centered around the two targets that need to be destroyed. Which also means everything that is going on is happening in a relatively small space. The perfect formula for intense, action-packed battles. That's not to say you can't get these kind of moments in conquest. You absolutely can. You just have a lot more downtime in between them, as you saw in the example earlier. Let's move over to the next category. The tactics and the impact you can have with your squad. The main reason as to why I prefer Rush over Conquest. In Rush, there are plenty of tactics you can apply in order to decide a round for yourself. And the best thing about it is you can execute most of them nicely with just a friend or a squad in tow. For example, each map and almost every base in Rush has a target that is notoriously hard to destroy for the attackers, especially when the other target in the base is already down. One of those is Objective A in the first base of Operation Locker in Battlefield 4. Naturally, when you're attacking, you want to get those targets out of the way as fast as possible. So one thing you can do is rush it with your whole squad right at the beginning of the round or base like we do here. More often than not, the defenders aren't ready or set up properly yet and you can easily take it down with a single squad and push. The same tactics apply on the defensive side, except this time you concentrate all your firepower to defend the notoriously hard target and let them have the other one. Sometimes it's better to lose one target in order to protect the other instead of losing both because you didn't have enough man at either side. Winning the fight over those handful of objectives can be the difference between winning and losing the whole round. It's what makes Rush so intense at times. I've had plenty of fairly unbalanced rounds where we steamrolled the other team's defense just to get stuck at one of those notorious objectives, ultimately losing the whole round in the end. On Conquest, on the other hand, there aren't many tactics you can apply to decide whole rounds in your favor. At least not any that are effective when you're only playing with a friend or a whole squad. 
Most of the time, you travel from flag to flag and fight to capture it. By the time you've gotten the flag you wanted, you've already lost another one. So you run there and repeat the process. This goes on for the majority of the round. This, however, strongly depends on the map, as there are conquest maps where this isn't the case and you can indeed win whole rounds with a single squad. I want to talk more about it in the last part of the video, where we take a look at how conquest could be improved. In the next part, I want to address the elephant in the room. Infantry battles versus vehicle warfare. If you're a fan of vehicles in battlefield and enjoy spending your time in a tank, jet or helicopter, Conquest is the way to go. Some rush maps also offer the opportunity to take a seat in one of those, but nothing really compares to the large-scale vehicle battles you experience in Conquest. Back in Battlefield 3, I absolutely loved sitting in a jet or helicopter and wreak havoc upon my opponents but I've turned into more of an infantry player since. I don't mind helicopters or tanks in rush at all. I still enjoy grabbing them for myself on occasion. The problem is that the vehicle distribution in rush is all unbalanced on most maps. In my opinion, if one side has a tank or helicopter, the other side should get one too in order to counter it. This isn't always the case. It makes some rush maps unplayable. This isn't an issue on Conquest. The vehicles are always balanced on either side and even if you're not a big fan of vehicle warfare, the maps are large enough so that you can avoid them most of the time. As the title of this video is, why is Rush better than Conquest, and this point clearly goes to Conquest, we'll move on to the last part of the video. How to improve Conquest in the future. There is nothing particularly wrong with conquest in itself. The only difference between bad and good conquest is the map design. So we're gonna talk about it. For this, we're gonna take a look at conquest maps in Battlefield 4 and Battlefield 1. While I have always been a Rush player, I really enjoyed playing conquest on Battlefield 1 and the sole reason for that is the map design. While we're taking a look at them, I will also explain why the map design allows for more action-packed gameplay as well as making tactics more relevant for single squads, like I mentioned earlier. It all comes down to one major difference. Circular, or as I'd like to call them, chaotic maps, and linear maps. Let me explain. If we take a look at Parasol Storm and highlight the obvious route of each team at the beginning of the game, we can see that their distance to flags A, B and E are about the same. This means those flags will be heavily contested straight from the beginning. This only leaves flags C and D as the so-called designated flags, the flags closer to either base so they can be captured before the other team even has the chance to attack them. This means we'll start the round off in chaos, as some will try to go for the contested flags, while others take their team's designated flag first, thus spreading the players across the whole map. The issue with this starts when every flag has been captured once and the rotation begins. Let's take a look at the obvious routes in between flags and we'll see the two triangles appear. This is bad, as this means players and teams can travel in between flags while completely avoiding each other. It becomes more clear when we turn the triangles into circles. You could circle flags B, C and D, as well as flags C, D and E. If everyone travels in the same direction, you'll get very little to no confrontation. This is why there is so much downtime in between battles on maps like these. It also doesn't allow for a lot of tactical gameplay, as you are naturally flanking each other by design of the map. Let's take a look at the linear map for comparison. The map we're looking at is Suez from Battlefield 1. As we can see the other team's base, we're gonna drag a line in between the flags A and E, and we'll notice that all the flags are in a relatively straight line. 
And if we highlight the obvious roots at the beginning of the round like we did before, it becomes pretty clear that both teams have two designated flags which they're gonna capture at the start of the round and then have an all-out battle for the last flag in the middle which will be heavily contested. This allows for much more action-packed gameplay as the whole battle is concentrated on one point on the map. It also allows for more tactical gameplay. Let's say the other team managed to take the middle flag and is now pushing you back towards your own base. You can now flank their whole team and start capturing their designated flag. This maneuver only needs a single player or a single squad, not the whole team. Once you've managed to take their flag, you can now attack them from both sides. This, in return, means that they will have to retreat from the front, allowing you to have more firepower in the middle of the map. If all goes well, they'll recapture their designated flag, but you'll manage to take the middle one in return, as they don't have enough man to hold it anymore. We've applied this tactic many times in Battlefield 1 before, and won a lot of rounds that we had no business winning. In conclusion, this is how I think Conquest could be improved, by adding more linear maps to the map pool. It allows for more action-packed gameplay with less downtime in between battles. It also introduces a layer of game-deciding tactics that can be executed by only a few players or a single squad. They also make better rush maps, so I see this as a win-win. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe. See you next time.